Here's clips of Mr. Fuji on Piper's pit. I believe he was throwing flower petals in Piper's face. I'm not quite sure. So Roddy quotes Confucius here with this Japanese man. He says he's dressed like a penguin, but I'm a polar bear. And so Fuji challenges him to a match. A match. Yes. So mm -hmm. I believe this was from Superstars. The Samurai Warrior, Mr. Fuji, versus Roddy Piper. So they claimed that Fuji must have thought that Roddy was still injured. Even though the announcers made clear he's been good to go for a while. So I guess Fuji is an idiot. Is no, that what we... I mean... Okay. So Roddy comes to the ring on crutches, but then he throws the crutches down and he unwraps his his, uh, his tape and he, he throws it in the crowd. And, you know, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, well, you know, this ain't going to be much of a match. Roddy will probably just, like, hit a move and pin him or whatever. What I was not expecting was that they would work a match. If you would have told me last week... Mr. Fuji and Roddy Piper are on the show and they're actually going to do a match, I would have said, bullshit. No chance. They fucking worked a match. They're trading strikes. Mr. Fuji got heat. Mr. Fuji went up to the top rope. Ah! And uh, he, there. he starts going up to the top and I'm like, what the fuck is this guy going to do? <laughs> and uh, I still couldn't tell you. He basically just leaped and crashed. I, would, I don't know what he would have done if the guy not moved. Yes. I think just he was going to jump and fall down, and hopefully the guy was underneath him. He just fucking crashes. And then, uh, you know, all the all the heels hit the ring, and uh, they're running wild. You know what's funny is that uh, Bob Orton, Cowboy Bob, mm -hmm. he's the uh, dad of, of Randy. Sure. And we've mentioned this before, but, like, when Randy Orton first debuted, you know, young, handsome Randy Orton, 2002, 2003... People were like, that is the son of Cowboy Bob? Like, you know, they look absolutely, completely, totally different. The more I watch fucking Cowboy Bob, yeah. the more it's like, he looks exactly like Randy. Because this week, he was wearing jeans and a uh, and an athletic cut shirt. So you couldn't see, like, his actual physique, but you could see, like, you know, the outline of his physique because he had a shirt on. It's like, this guy had a great physique. He wasn't ripped when he took his shirt off, like he didn't have a six-pack or whatever. But you could see that, like, if he'd have been on the juice, he'd have been gigantic. And uh, if he would have shaved his head, he would have looked exactly like Randy. So anyway, he uh, runs wild, and uh, they're beating the hell out of Piper three-on-one. And then uh, Morocco's there doing spots with Roddy, which is basically drop an elbow, Roddy moves. Drop an elbow, Roddy moves. Drop an elbow, Roddy moves. Then Roddy starts swinging the, the crutch or whatever, and the heels bail. They ring the bell, and then uh, it's Danny Davis. He disqualifies Roddy for swinging the crutch. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, before with this guy, it was like everything he does is, you know, it's questionable decision. Should he have done that or not? Probably shouldn't have, but it's questionable. This was not questionable. It was a three-on-one outside interference attack. That was not a DQ. But when the guy cleared the ring with a crutch, he DQ'd that guy. So they're speeding up this storyline with uh, with uh, Danny Davis. But I liked this segment. I liked watching Fuji kind of wrestle. I liked the angle they did with Danny Davis. I thought Piper, I mean, he's way better wrestling than talking. So in the end, I thought this was a win. There was at one point Roddy swung that... Uh, swung that. Um, excuse me. You sound like Cowboy Bob. Jiminy Christmas, bro. My goodness. Uh, he swung that crutch, and Bob was taking a bump, but he got his his hand was up, and Roddy just clobbered his hand with a crutch. It looked brutal. I just want to say that uh, if you are a young wrestler in training, I implore you to watch Mr. Fuji to demonstrate how not to land off the top rope. <laughs> the idea you didn't like that jumping and landing on his hip and ass and tailbone the, all at the same time? The idea is to land with as much surface area as possible all at the same time. He jumped off at like a, and he came down at about a 45 degree angle, so he broke both his feet first. Then he landed on his ass and broke his tailbone. And then he landed on his elbow, and I'm sure he broke that too. That was It'd be so like dropping violent. the Great Pyramid upside down. Kinda. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, anything else happened there. I still can't get over the fact that he stood on the top rope. And jumped. That blew my mind. He stood on the top rope and he balanced there. Mr. Fuji, he's not a wrestler. He used to be. I know, but he's not a wrestler not in, in my mind. Not in 86, no. Ken Resnick interviews Hillbilly Jim. 
Don't go messing with a country boy is climbing the charts. It got Jim to farm aid. Jim thanks all the farmers. Gives a shout out to Willie Nelson. Acknowledges his granny has been under the weather, but she's feeling much better. Promised Ken possum pudding for Thanksgiving. He brought Gene some and Gene liked it. That's it. <laughs> that was the promo. He plugged Farm Aid. Apparently he's second in popularity behind Hogan. I, was about to say. I actually can believe yeah. that. He was a very popular yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what? You know, even though it was a Farm Aid promo, I mean, he he is a good speaker. That's true. He's a he's a believable, real yeah. like the funny thing is the gimmick is ridiculous. His name is Hillbilly Jim. Yeah. Like, you know, that's like a derogatory term. Call someone a hillbilly. It's usually an insult. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like, that's pretty ins- insulting to call someone a hillbilly. Yeah. And I was watching. I think I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but hillbilly was on the show last week, or they were talking about him, and uh, and Heenan called him a hillbilly. And I was taken aback, like, man, you couldn't get away with calling someone like that. And then I realized that's his fucking name, hillbilly Jim. Yeah. But anyway, so he's got, it's actually like Boom Pro Wrestling. He's got a totally ridiculous gimmick, but then he does an interview as James Morrison or whatever his name was. Like a normal, human, nice, regular, actual living being. So that was weird. I loved this next segment. <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon explains. Earlier this afternoon, wrestling fans, a happening took place. <laughs> At a local bank. And our wrestling challenge cameras were right on hand. This is a milestone here in the World Wrestling Federation. Let's take a look at it. So Bobby Heenan and the Doctor of Style Slick are at the (laughs) bank. Yes. And there, first there's the vault. The vault. Mm -hmm. This is where the Joker breaks in and takes all the money. And they're looking in there. I think they're just looking at the money and enjoying it. It wasn't their money, but they wanted to see it. So they go to the counter. Slick is explaining he takes no check. He don't deal with nothing but cash. Hercules is the greatest asset in in professional wrestling. I would not be selling him to you were not for all this cash. And they step up to the cashier and say, we're ready to do this. And she reaches the side and she puts forth a giant pile of money. Yeah. (laughs) Just stacks of wads and bills. and So Heenan asks Slick... How are you going to get this home? And Slick throws back his jacket and reaches for his rear pocket. And Heenan panics. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But Slick assures him. It's cool, baby. Hang loose, hang loose. And he pulls out a paper bag. Yeah. So they're working together on shoveling all this cash into this paper bag. And some of it falls on the ground. And this must have been a shoot accident. Because it was the perfect opportunity While Slick was distracted picking up the money off the ground, Heenan should have grabbed one roll of bills and pocketed it. That would have been even better. Regardless, he assures Slick, it's all clean. You can't get money dirty. You should know that. I enjoy this because it was so ridiculous that uh, they had to bring their own bag. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The bank can't provide a fucking bag for, like, literally stacks of money this big is what they had there. Mm -hmm. And they've got to put it in the thing themselves. And, uh, yeah. This was like one of those deals where it's one take, one camera, no cuts, and they did it once and were like, eh, that's fine. Let's just, let's get out of here. All that was missing on the bag was the novelty dollar sign. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been better. Bobby Heenan says, pleasure doing business with you. Slick says, you know what, Daddy? Adios, brother. And he leaves. And Bobby Heenan, Bobby the Brain Heenan says, take care. He's a nice guy. I loved this so much. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers. 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.